Starting off with the worst evolution in the game, we got the Evolved Barbarians. As more and more evolutions have gotten added and after the Evolved Barbarians have received a couple nerfs, they have definitely fallen out of the meta and for the most part you can only use them inside of lava decks and even then, oftentimes you prefer using the Evolved Valkyrie over them. The second worst evolution in the game currently, which is also going in F tier, is the Evolved Battle Ram. With all the stun cards in the game and all the buildings, it's really hard to get it to reach the tower. And also also with the Goblin Stein getting added and the Evolved Electra Drag, those are two other counters to the Evolved Battle Ram. And also, you're just much better off using the Ram Rider in your P.E.K.K.A. deck. The last evolution going in F tier is the Evolved Archers. This is one that just got a lot worse after the nerf, and with how prevalent arrows are in the meta, which is a direct counter to them, it's no surprise that they have a hard time fitting in a lot of decks. We're going to start off C tier with the Evolved Ice Spirit. It's still one of the weaker evolutions, but it's a bit better now and no longer in F tier because a lot of people have realized how valuable it is inside of some cycle decks, like with the Hog Rider and inside of Royal Hog. Hogs, for example, it is so good defensively, but it doesn't do very much on offense, which is why it's still a weak evolution. The Evolved Wall Breakers are also going in C tier. I feel like they're not too much better than the regular Wall Breakers because oftentimes it's challenging to get them to reach the tower because there's a lot of people using buildings. But with that being said, they are slightly better now that the Cannoneer doesn't fully counter them when you play them both in the same lane. The Evolved Wizard is going in C tier too, actually. He used to be one of the best evolutions in the game, but after the two nerfs he got where his shield hit points were reduced and the amount of knockback he deals is less, he has been being played a lot less since then. He still can be played in some decks with P.E.K.K.A. for example, but a lot worse than before. The bats are also going in C tier. They're pretty good in some bait decks with the mortar, of course, with the miner, but I think overall they're not that difficult to deal with if you know what you're doing, especially because of how prevalent some spells are in the meta, which take them out very easily, and all the splash cards. Firecracker will also be going in C tier, the last card in this tier. Don't get me wrong, she's way better than the Evolved Archers, which is why she's a whole tier higher. But just like the Evolved Archers, she dies to arrows, which so many people do play. The other problem with the Evolved Firecrackers, for the most part, Hog Rider's the main deck you're going to see her in, so she's not extremely versatile, and you also got to worry about king activations when you play her. We're going to start off B tier with the Evolved Goblin Cage. I consider this to be a fairly average evolution. It got a small buff in the last set of balance changes where the Brawler is dealing a bit more DPS to units when they're actually inside of the cage, but I think overall it's not a super versatile card. You can only play it inside of heavier decks and it's fairly easy to counter with things like the Earthquake. The next card going in B tier is the Evolved Tesla. This used to be potentially the most broken evolution in the game, but in the last set of balance changes, they removed the Death Shockwave. So now the Evolved Tesla is significantly worse and it's more manageable to actually break through it, making it a more balanced evolution. The Evolve Royal Recruits will also be going in B tier. I consider them to be an average evolution currently. They were a lot worse a few months ago, but they have definitely gotten a bit better as the meta has shifted. I will say though, the Evolved E-Drag does very, very good against them, which definitely helps keep them in check. The Evolved Goblin Barrel is also going in B tier. People have realized it's actually a pretty good evolution. It used to be considered one of the worst, but people have learned how valuable it is, especially inside of bait decks. And when you're playing against the Cannoneer, the fake goblins are actually just as valuable as the real ones, and they cannot be ignored. The Evolved Mortar will also be going in B tier. It's going down a tier because it got a pretty big nerf in the last set of balance changes where the first hit of the Evolved Mortar was reduced, which is definitely going to impact the card quite a lot when retargeting. But with that being said, I definitely still think it's going to be a viable evolution. And the Evolved Royal Giant will also be going in B tier. I consider this to be a very balanced evolution. Obviously, in some scenarios, it's not going to be better at all than the regular Royal Giant, but there are going to be some situations where, for example, if your opponent plays a mini P.E.K.K.A. or goblins on the Evolve Royal Giant, that knockback is going to be very beneficial. So the ability is kind of situational, but I feel like that overall makes it a pretty balanced card. And the last card going in B tier is going to be the Evolved Zap. This used to be one of the best evolutions in the game, but after the big nerf in the last set of balance changes where it only strikes twice now, 
it is going to make it a lot worse in a lot of situations, but I still think it will be viable inside of some beatdown decks like with the Lava Hound or maybe the Giant, for example. We're going to start off A tier with the Evolve Goblin Drill. It got a rework in the last set of balance changes and people have realized by now it overall is a nerf where it doesn't deal spawn damage anymore when it resurfaces or it doesn't knock things back, which means it's significantly easier to defend the goblins with ground cards now, but it is still a very good win condition. I just think it is a lot worse overall and a bit more manageable to defend. The Evolved Goblin Giant is going in A tier. It has proven to be one of the strongest evolutions and it combos very well with other evolutions. You can use it with the Evolved P.E.K.K.A. You can use it with the Evolved Mega Knight, the Evolved Zap, the Evolved Bats. There's so many things you can pair it with and those goblins spawning can be very beneficial in some scenarios for distracting a high DPS card that was attacking the Goblin Giant, for example. Maybe you Zap retarget it so that way it starts attacking the goblins and it overall makes your push a lot more threatening. The Evolved Knight will also be going in A tier. This thing has been nerfed a few times by now and it still hasn't seemed to impact the card very much. It is still by far an above average evolution and such a great evolution to have inside of your cycle deck because of how long it stays on the map for. It just tanks for such a long time because of the shield ability it has when he walks. The Evolved Valkyrie will be going in A tier as well. If you don't want to use the Evolved Knight as a tank, well then the Evolved Valk is another option as well. She has proven to be very good inside of Lava Hound decks, but you can also use her in Hog X NATO with the Goblin Drill as well. So a very versatile card and that Tornado ability she has is so useful in a lot of scenarios clumping things together. And the last card going in A tier is actually the Evolved Electro Drag. It's perhaps not as broken as people thought it would be, but I guess the nerf they gave it before it was released in game was enough to make it so it isn't broken anymore. The drawback of it too is you can only use it inside of beatdown decks. For example, inside of Lumberloon Freeze, maybe Golem, Pekka, you cannot use it in cycle decks. And overall, it's not super difficult to deal with it, especially if you're running a cycle deck. But don't get me wrong, it is absolutely incredible against beatdown decks. The first card going in S tier is going to be the Evolved Mega Knight. And man, oh man, do I know casuals absolutely hate this card. I before thought this card was A tier in the last meta, but then what happened is because the Cannoneer got a nerf, as well as the Evolved P.E.K.K.A., that's technically an indirect buff to the Evolved Mega Knight, which has made it even better now. Just the fact that it's knocking things back every single hit makes it absolutely incredible against beatdown decks, but that's also going to mean it's very good against things like the Hog Rider, just continuously knocking it back so it doesn't have any chance of getting a hit on your tower. And the Evolved P.E.K.K.A. is the next one going in S tier. This might be surprising to a lot of people because she got a massive nerf in the last set of balance changes where she does 20% less heal per kill, but it seemingly has hardly affected the evolution because she has still proven to be one of the very best evolutions in the game. And I think part of the reason is what I was talking about for the Evolved Mega Knight, where because the Cannoneer was nerfed, and there's less people using the Cannoneer, and the Cannoneer, of course, which deals a lot of DPS, that's going to mean the Evolved P.E.K.K.A. nerf is going to have less of an impact. And also, because there's more people using the Evolved Mega Knight, that's going to mean people are still going to want to use the Evolved P.E.K.K.A. as a way of countering the Evolved Mega Knight. And even though the nerf definitely impacts her, it's not like that heal now is non-existent. She still heals when she kills things, which helps keep her alive for longer. And the P.E.K.K.A. by itself is not even a bad card. So you can imagine any type of evolution the regular P.E.K.K.A. has is still going to mean it's a fantastic evolution. Next up is going to be the Evolved Bomber. Now, the Bomber got a very small nerf in the last set of balance changes where it's dealing 2% less damage, which essentially means the bomb from the Bomber isn't going to be able to one-shot spirits anymore. That makes literally no impact, though, when we're talking about the Evolved Bomber. Heck, if you have a spirit in front of your tower and the Evolved Bomber lines up against it, does it really matter that it doesn't take out that spirit? Not 
really it doesn't really impact the card at all as a win condition if you have anything that's next to your tower and you play the evolve bomber at the bridge you are getting a lot of damage dealt to your tower there's no difference in terms of how good it is paired with the tornado and just how versatile it is it is incredible in so many different cycle decks you can also use it inside of heavier decks like with the giant inside a giant graveyard with the lava hound just an absolutely incredible evolution and for sure one of the strongest at the moment and the best evolution in the game, in my opinion, is the Evolved Skeletons. There are so many people using this card as their evolution of choice, or one of the two, as you get two evolutions in your deck, especially in Cycle Decks. Almost all the time in a Cycle Deck, you're going to see the Evolved Skeletons, whether it's the Hog, the Royal Hogs, the Goblin Drill, the Miner, maybe even Mortar. And then you could even use them in some heavier decks if you want as well. With the Royal Giant, you sometimes see them. Sometimes even with the Evolve P.E.K.K.A., they're going to be a pretty good counter to the Evolve P.E.K.K.A. It's going to force a response out of them. And if your opponent has the Cannoneer, oh my goodness, you have a chance of getting them to the tower. And if your opponent doesn't have the proper spell, then they have to overcommit and sometimes spend, it seems like, 10 Elixir just to take them out because of how versatile they are and because of how many opportunities you get to use the evolution in the match because of how cheap they are i think that is why i consider them to be the best evolution currently they are just so so consistent even though sometimes they don't do something other times one set of evolved skeletons can win you the whole game and take their tower so obviously they're an evolution that takes some skill because you have to be keeping track of your opponent's spells and cycle but if you know how to properly do that like the pros do that is why you see them so much in so many different cycle decks if you guys enjoyed my ranking be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you guys are not subscribed already you can use creator code boss to support me in any super Soul game and let me know in the comments below what you guys think about my ranking what do you agree with what do you disagree with and thanks again until next time guys